seafood mousse from 1972. So they describe this dish as an elegant and fancy way to elevate family dinners. However, upon first glance, I would describe it as an ornate pile of sh you Start with a cup and a half of canned crab. I love crab in a can. Yay! <laughs> Why does it have a diaper? Is the crab diaper integral to this dish? Well, you never know. Cup of celery. Celery! If water was a vegetable. <laughs> Marinate this in some lemon juice. Tabasco. Worcestershire. <laughs> My car on a cold morning. Worcestershire sauce. Salt. And onion powder. Now atop a double boiler, we melt eight ounces of cream cheese in a can of tomato soup. Fire! Now to a cup of water goes three packets of gelatin. You knew this was coming. It's like watching a car crash. Ah! I move this to an ice bath. Once it's thickened, we fold in a cup of mayonnaise. Whatever you think elevate means is wrong. Finally, our crab. It's just morbid. To the fridge. No. Ah! Huh? Oh, that's fancy, all right. Fancy feast. Some good cat food. A plus. Velveeta fudge from 1984. There are a lot of ways to make fudge, most of which aren't as problematic as this, but then again, who are we to fault the 80s? Start with a cup of butter in a heavy pan. I reckon this is a heavy pan. Heavy with the burden of whatever crime it is I'm going to commit. We melt that down with a half pan. Half pound of Velveeta. Neither scientist nor scholar knows precisely what Velveeta is. It is the occult, the great unknown. Fire! Well, this is already critically disturbing. In goes half a cup of cocoa powder. <laughs> it's cheesy. <laughs> Next up is two pounds of powdered sugar. Hold on. <laughs> yes, I see. It's the whole bag. Now, I'm no mathematician, but I'm not sure how this whole bag's gonna fit in here, Mildred. Her name is Mildred. This is not gonna work. It's not. Oh, no way. Oh, it's alive. <laughs> Finally, you take off the heat and add in some nilla. Oh, it's like a tumor. <laughs> to the fridge. Ooh. <laughs> Man, that's a good fudge. Scotcheroos from 1965. So Rice Krispie Treats were invented all the way back in 1939 at the Kellogg's Company in Battle Creek, Michigan, and have since become the most dominant Rice Krispie confection. But 26 years later, they came up with these, a lesser known variant which we are going to try today. In a big old pan, we're gonna need a cup of corn syrup, <laughs> followed by a cup of sugar. Excessive. Fire! Bring this to a boil to create a cavity-inducing syrup. Charming. Next, we remove from heat and add in a cup of peanut butter. <laughs> Mix. Then in goes five cups of Rice Krispies. You know, I've never understood America's obsession with breakfast cereals. Whatever was wrong starting your middle school mornings crying over a sad bowl of oatmeal. That was character building. Good old liquid cardboard. Anyway, this is rather dense. In this goes to a 13 by 9. Just cooperate. While that's cooling, we melt a cup of butterscotch chips and a cup of chalky chips over a double boiler. Melt, you get! Just spread it on and cool completely. Yes! Mmm. Mmm. These are good. These are better than Rice Krispie Treats. Chow mein cookies from 1968. Now I'm down for chow mein noodles and I'm down for cookies, but I mean common sense says that they shouldn't necessarily go together. Or do they? We start with six ounces of chalky chips, which is a little more than a cup. Plus six ounces of butterscotch chips. We're off to a good start. Now we simply melt this over a double boiler. Fire! Then we remove from heat and add in five ounces of chow mein noodles. You see, this is where you lose me. Because I think this is troubling. Like, clinically. Or you were subject to a fall from a great height. I'm trying to say you're a little messed up, Teresa from Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> and a half cup of salted peanuts. Some crunch for your trauma. Mix until you cry. Then you just dollop onto some wax paper to cool while you think about your life choices. <laughs> Here we have some choice piles of excrement. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, these this is just a good idea. The smooth chocolate and the butterscotch with the salty crunch of the noodles and the peanuts, it... Yes. Pang Cookies from 1969. Hey! Now this recipe is from Nebraska. Nebraska, are you okay? We begin with three quarters of a cup of tang. Might I remind you that this is a cookie with drink mix. Mm hmm Followed by a half cup of sugar. Any dentists out there? Two eggies! And two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil. That's a choice. Whisk. Gee, this, this sure is vibrant. Nebraska! Now the dry ingredients are dry. Two cups of flour. Two teaspoons of floof powder. Boop. And a half teaspoon of salt. I expected Nebraskans to be saltier since they live in Nebraska. Combine. Mix. Boop. 350 for about 12 to 15 minutes. I know, I know. Oh, I know. Hmm. Nebraska. They are quirky, but not bad. It's tangy. I would bake them a little less though, like 10 to 12 minutes. But thank you, Nebraska. 
ice cream coleslaw from 1973. Now, I don't precisely know the nature of the dystopian demons that must have been inhabiting the minds of the people of the 1970s, but they must have been severe enough as to cause this abomination. We begin with three cups of shredded cabbage. You know, cabbage is one of those things... I have nothing else to add. Next is eight ounces of whipped topping. That's one way to spice things up. Ooh, we don't shame anybody here. Now, 20 ounces of crushed pineapple. Did I mention this was in the kids' recipe section? Yeah. Mm. This is why we hate cabbage! Very bad. Finally, we have a pinch of salt and two tablespoons of white vinegar. You, ma'am, are motivated by anger and anger alone. Now we let this chill for about two hours or enough time to sell your possessions and flee the state. Mm. I feel like I'm waiting to be hanged. All right. It tastes like how a dentist office smells. Broken dreams and scattered screams. I, that's the product of an ill mind. Ice cream cone cupcakes from 79. Now you'd think that ice cream cones are for ice cream, but nope. This is the 70s. We do what we want. We start with a half cup of vegetable oil, a cup of sugar, teaspoon of vanilla, <clears throat> and one egg key. Then you whisk vigorously. <clears throat> for the dry ingredients, we have a cup and a half of flour, half cup of cocoa, mm. and a teaspoon of floof soda. Baking soda. Then we alternate adding our dry ingredients with a half cup of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you could always buy it. Mix. Mix. And finally, a half cup of hot water. Ooh. Oh boy. We fill these up about two thirds of the way and they need to have a flat bottom, like me. Get it! Whoa. 350 for about 30 minutes. Hello! For the buttercream, we just beat a half cup of soft butter, slowly adding a cup of powdered sugar, and some vanilla. Yes, you can make buttercream by hand. I do everything by hand. I'm very lonely. Hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's just a really tasty, fun idea. I love it. Deep fried Oreos from 2001. Now, is this an old recipe? Well, it depends on who you ask. But it is absurd, vulgar, and without regard for culinary decorum. It's American. Our batter begins with one cup of pancake mix. Get out of the cup. Come on. Stop being difficult. Half a cup of milk. Moo juice! Tablespoon of vegetable oil. And one egg heat. Whisk vigorously. <laughs> is my clock dead? <laughs> It is now. Next up, we fill a pot about four inches deep with oil. Fire! Now our oil is hot, so we just dip in our Oreos. Woo! And then they go. About three minutes on each side. This is so ridiculous. Woo! Oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh. These are incredible. I mean, look at that. You're insane, but I love you. I'm a changed man. Absolutely wild. A Coca-Cola salad from the 70s. So this recipe has been floating around the internet for quite some time now, and people seem to think it's from the 50s, but it's not. It's more so typical of the 70s or the 80s or a psychopath. We start with one package of cream cheese, <laughs> into which we dust a package of orange jello. Yeah, that really does say that. That's... that... <laughs> oh, oh no. Some high-vis cheese, Department of Transportation certified. Next, we take 10 ounces of Coke and we boil it. <laughs> Fire! This is a very disturbing way to spend a day. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Just what I was feeling for lunch. Carbonated orange cheese gravy. Look away. Lastly, we have a half cup of nuts. At least the recipe is self-aware. <laughs> so we leave this at room temperature for a bit. Then to the fridge. Good morning. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Mm. So first and foremost, it is disturbing. Quite. But the potential is there. Because it has this cheesecake vibe. And the flavors are okay. It's just been corrupted. Magic beer bread from 84. Now most breads are risen by yeast. Those lovely little things that make your bread all fluffy and puffy like a cat in heat. But this recipe is a quick bread, something which doesn't have any yeast, but promises to taste like it does. We begin with a 12 ounce can or bottle of your choice of brew. Oh, this is my type of baking. Just make sure it's not cold. Then we just add three cups of flour. Oh, it's foamy. Three tablespoons of sugar. Three teaspoons of baking powder. Sloop. And finally, a good pinch of salt. Now we just go to town with our hands. Rings are coming off. That's how you knew you were in trouble. Oh, darn. Hello! Get off! And into a greased loaf pan. Uh, flatten it out. Then in this goes to a cold, unpreheated oven. Sacrilegious! Set the temperature to 350 and bake for about an hour. Uh, is this the magic part? Do a trick! Woo! Not exactly a pretty loaf of bread. Hmm. 
Whoa! But it don't need to be pretty, because that's pretty darn good. The beer offers all that lovely sour taste that you'd expect from yeast. Wow. For a dead simple, easy, cheap bread, that is a winner. Peanut butter soup from 1941. So this cookbook was put out by the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company to make sure people were getting adequate nutrition during the war. And the soup here is apparently the perfect meal when it comes to ideal macronutrient intake. We've come a long way in 80 years. Into a saucepan, we start by melting five tablespoons of lard. You know, in the story of my life, lard is the closest thing I've ever had to an... Nemesis! Fire! Once the lard is melted, we make a roux by whisking in five tablespoons of flour. <laughs> now that we've got some color, we mix in a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. <laughs> diluting it with the same amount of water. <clears throat> Finally, we have a pinch of salt and just a half cup of peanut butter. Get in! Oh, it is, this is thick. Today we're serving up hot beige. Come get your bowl of brown. Give me a I don't understand. This dish has no idea what it's trying to be. It is confused. It isn't terrible. It's just an unfortunate way to consume peanut butter. Cornstarch cookies from 1919. These go by many names like starchies, meltaways, and in Brazil where they originate, sequilus. But they're one of the OG gluten-free three ingredient cookies. We start with a half cup of sweetened condensed milk, followed by a half cup of soft butter. Beat vigorously. Then using the handle of a spoon, we slowly stir in two cups of cornstarch. What precisely does this accomplish? Trust the process. Hmm. This is a strange trifecta of ingredients. I'm intrigued. Now we bake in a slow oven for 15 to 20 minutes. We'll do 325 Fahrenheit. Perfect. These are so cute. Well, you know, in a world of similar cookies, these are something quite special. They're like a cloud of joy. Incredibly unique. Hmm. Macaroni biscuits from World War II. So during the turn of the 40s, there was this strange trend of people putting disturbing ingredients into dinner biscuits. Whether it was the product of wartime rations, personal taste, or consanguineous marriage remains a mystery. First step is to cook a half cup of macaroni. Fire! <laughs> Meanwhile, our dry ingredients are two cups of flour, quarter cup of sugar, teaspoon of salt, plus five teaspoons of baking powder. Goddamn. This is a Josh Groban treatment. You can fire these from a mortar. Don't got me making ballistic biscuits. Strain! Wet ingredients are three tablespoons of melted shortening, a cup of moon juice, one eighth key, and the macaroni. Combine the two. Mix. Boop. We got the muffin biscuits. Half hour at 400. Oh, boy. Woo. What? Oh, there's something wrong here. There seems to be macaroni in my biscuit. <laughs> Precisely what you think it would be. It feels like brains. Ginger nuts from 1906. Now, I've never seen a ginger nut, but I assume it's roughly the same as a blonde or a brunette. Fittingly, these nuts begin with a good pound of flour, pinch of salt, three ounces of sugar, teaspoon of soda, and half an ounce of ginger. Whoa! You're gonna be spicy. Now, to a saucepan, we add four ounces of butter, plus half a pound of any treacle. I would call that excessive. Fire! Once the butter is melted, we add half a gill of milk. What is a gill? <coughs> a gill is 32 fluid drams. Well, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> when has the avoir du bois system helped anybody? We need a quarter cup. Moon juice! In we go! Mix. We knead in flour until stiff. Come on! <laughs> Roll to balls. And what are balls without nuts? Bake in a quick oven for about seven minutes. That'll be 400 degrees. Hello! Okay, I see you. It is a snapless, rotund ginger snap. It's like what ginger beer is to ginger ale, just in cookie form. Good cookie. Coconut ice from 61. Now it's come to my attention that a lot of Americans don't like coconut, and you know what? It's okay to be wrong. But this here is an old school British candy which looks too simple to be good. We begin with a 15 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Half of it goes in one bowl, the other half in another. Then into each bowl goes a cup of powdered sugar. My sweet tooth is tingling. Mix. Then we dye one bowl pink by using a few drops of red food coloring. Boop. You know, as a kid, I've always loved pink, which was the first of many signs. And a little bit of nilla. Finally, to each bowl goes two cups of coconut flakes. Don't use sweetened. <laughs> you will kill somebody. One, two. Then to an eight inch parchment lined pan goes the first layer. <clears throat> Gotta pack it tight. Then the second. <clears throat> this is fun. And that's it. Pop it in the fridge for at least three hours to set. <clears throat> Ooh. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Mm, these are just lovely. What do you think? There's no ice in these. <laughs>
the perfect summer candy. Copycat Almond Joys from 1953. Yes, copycat recipes are nothing new, and neither are Almond Joys. In fact, one Mrs. Kirk from Montgomery, Alabama loved them so much, she wanted to make them herself. Let's go, honey. We start with an entire 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. To which we add two cups of powdered sugar. Mix. Then comes four cups of unsweetened coconut. That, that's a lot. Come on! Then press it into a large parchment-lined pan. I'm using a 13 by 9 inch, but you could use anything similar, like a casserole dish. <laughs> Once everything's flat and even, you're gonna need some almonds. You just line them up and press them in. <laughs> this is so satisfying. Now this goes to the fridge, preferably overnight. It just needs to be really hard. Ooh, cut! <laughs> yes! Now four cups of chocolate and two teaspoons of shortening or coconut oil. Melting over a double boiler. Fire! Then dip and cover. Hello! Done! Let him set. <laughs> mm -hmm. On the money! Mm, look at that! We did that! Mrs. Kirk, you're my hero. Magic peanut butter cookies from 84. These are three ingredient cookies, which means I have some serious doubts. Because a normal cookie contains butter, milk, salt, baking powder, flour, this recipe just says no. We start with one cup of peanut butter, mm, a half cup of sugar, plus one egg, and that's it. <laughs> this is not how you make cookies. Just roll them out. Then cross them with a fork. There's no way. This is gonna end up a melted tray of peanut butter. 350 for 10 minutes. No. Come on. How? You cheated. <laughs> These are brilliant. Melt in your mouth, brilliant. <laughs> Here I was thinking I knew how baking worked. It's not fair. Poor man's cake from the Great Depression. The Depression was bad, right? People were crawling around on all fours in their yards eating dandelions. No, that's not an exaggeration. Those who were better off, like Ruth here, came up with recipes like this. Though bless her heart, she couldn't spell raisins. That's okay, Ruth. We start by cooking one cup of said raisins with two cups of water. Fire! We're boiling this until it reduces by half. Mm. Then we beat in a whole cup of shortening. I mean, I think that's a little excessive. This is, this, mm. In goes one, eight, keep. Plus a teaspoon each of ground cloves, allspice, and simonium! Ruth, I don't think that's gonna help. Finally, we add one teaspoon of baking soda and two cups of flour. Get him! Oh, this does, this does not look right. There are no baking instructions at all, so we're just gonna do 350 for Lord knows how long. About 45 minutes. Did you notice there was no sugar? My legs are shaking, and not in the good way. Mm. Mm. Well, that tastes like a diagnosis that is severe. Cowboy Cookies from 65. Now I'm familiar with cookies and I'm quite familiar with cowboys. I went to the University of Wyoming. Go Pokes! So let's bake their cookies. We start by toasting a cup of coconut, a cup of pecans, and two cups of rolled oats. What? I've never thought to toast oats. Eight minutes at 350. Next we have a cup of butter, a cup of brown sugar, and a cup of sugar. Sugar. This recipe is so even. How nice. Cream. <laughs> Lilla. And two eggs. Mixy mix. Oh, toasty. For the dry ingredients, we have two cups of flour and a mere teaspoon of baking soda. Fold. In goes all of the toasties. <laughs> Plus two cups of chalky chips. <laughs> so much stuff. Cause the Western folks all know. About 11 minutes at 3.50. <laughs> These are highfalutin. Mm. Hold on. Good? Very. Ambrosia from 1951. So mid-century America has produced many suspect salads, many of which continue to leak out of the angsty states of Wisconsin and Minnesota. However, Ambrosia is arguably the one that started them all, the pioneer, if you will, and today we're gonna see if that's a good thing. Start by draining a pound and a half of mandarin oranges, pound of maraschino cherries, and 20 ounces of pineapple. Time for a cup and a third of cream whipped. Keep in mind, this is a salad. <laughs> I like to whip cream by hand. It's a lot more intimate. Now in goes a half cup of sour cream and a half cup of coconut. <laughs> Chop the cherries and a cup of walnuts. Sure. Walnuts aren't my favorite, but I've been known to never turn down a nut. Mm. In goes the cherries, pineapple, mix. Just like me, the mandarin oranges are a delicate fruit, so they go in last. You know, this actually looks pretty good. <laughs> to the fridge. Once you're ready to serve, you fold in two cups of marshmallows. <laughs> to the cell. This has to be the most 50s thing ever. Mmm. -hmm. <laughs> you know what? I like this one. It's quite pleasant. <laughs>
Tomato Aspic from 1939. Yes, this is arguably the most infamous dish of the 20th century. At one point, it was on every menu from coast to coast. We start with three cups of stewed tomatoes, then an onion. What is the size of this onion? This thing's heavier than my self-doubt. <laughs> Mm. One celery stalk. Slicey slice. And now for the most pointless herb, the bay leaf. I think of these like small men. You'd have a hard time telling whether it's in or not. A pinch of salt and sugar, plus a single clove. So what are you doing tonight? Into a pot. Fire! Cooking for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, we soak two tablespoons of gelatin in a half cup of water. Now we strain this to remove any trace of reason from the dish. Yeah. And the gelatin. I don't like the look of this at all. To the fridge. Whoop. What do you think we garnish this with? Did you guess mayo? Stop jiggling! And some paprika. <laughs> this is just a commendably daft idea. It tastes like somebody killed Italy. It's like geriatric ketchup. A chocolate beet cake from 66. Now look, I'm no stranger to cakes with bizarre ingredients, but I think the use of pickled beets is the most unorthodox. We start by blending our 15 ounce can of pickled beets. Juice and all, honey. Ah! <laughs> there seems to have been a murder. Now into a bowl goes a half cup of vegetable oil, one and a half cups of sugar, a bit of nina, three egg keys. Whisk vigorously. In go the beets. Oh, it's pink. For the dry ingredients, we need two cups of flour, third of a cup of cocoa, a pinch of salt, and a teaspoon of baking soda. But there's no acid. Oh, the beets! They might be onto something. Get in! Fold. Oh, it's like velvet. About 50 minutes at 375. Ooh. Ooh. For the ganache, we need a half cup of cream and four ounces of chocolate over very low heat. Fire! Just until the chocolate melts and everything is smooth. Ooh. Oh, my. <laughs> Son of a- It's fantastic! Beats! What's next? Leftover bread pancakes from 1947. Now I love pancakes, so a homemade recipe which is easy, needs no flour, and lets you use up some stale bread seems too good to be true. Let's see if it is. We start with seven or eight slices of stale bread. Mm. Just tear it up and put it in a bowl. Adding to it three quarters of a cup of milk. Moon juice! Time to mash! <laughs> Next, a pinch of salt, two tablespoons of sugar. They recommend four if these are for kids. Can I be a kid, please? <laughs> Next is one teaspoon of floof powder, which is baking powder. I call it floof powder because it floofs. Finally, one egg key. Beating thoroughly. A bit of oil. Fire! Then you just... Three minutes on each side on medium-high heat. Ooh. Ooh. Smell really good. They're so fluffy. It's a good pancakes. I'm not even gonna wait for my bread to go stale. I'm just, I'm just gonna make these. Cheese cookies from 81. Call me crazy, but I believe that cookies should be sweet, a dessert, a treat. This isn't that. No, our friends from the 80s have come up with a savory appetizer cookie, so ha uh -uh. We start by melting two sticks of oleo. This stuff also goes by the name of margarine, or wrong. <laughs> then a half pound of sharp cheddar. Mr. Cheese, I'm so sorry. Mmm, sloppy. A teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Worcestershire. A tablespoon of Tabasco. And two cu- <laughs> Plus two cu- I can't say it. <laughs> mm, Rice Krispies. I have never seen anything like this. Finally, a pinch of salt and two cups of flour. <laughs> Bake at 350 until golden brown. Oh. <laughs> no. That's not right. Spicy and cakey and crunchy. Just eat cheese. A wacky cake from the Great Depression. So the stock market's crashed and we can't afford any butter, eggs, or milk. But little Johnny still wants a cake for his birthday. Selfish brat. Directly into a cake pan goes a cup and a half of flour. A teaspoon of floof soda. Bloop. One of the reasons this is called a wacky cake is because you don't need a bowl. Though living in the Depression, I think everyone needed a bowl. A cup of sugar. A third of a cup of cuckoo. Then we just mix it with a fork. <laughs> Now we make three wells. I feel like a gardener. Do you guys remember Farmville? Those were the days. Into one well goes two tablespoons of vinegar. Next, a third of a cup of oil. Nilla. And finally, a whole cup of water. Just mix it in the pan. Bake this at 350 for about a half hour. Ooh, it's a cake. Cool completely in the pan. For the frosting, we need a cup of powdered sugar. Two tablespoons of cuckoo. And slowly add water until thick. Beautiful. What? How did that not stick? Are you a witch? <laughs> this! Yes! That's a darn good cake.
Econo meatloaf from the Great Depression. Yes, this is a depression meatloaf, which happens to be what I call myself when I'm wrapped in blankets at 2 a.m. watching Netflix covered in Pop-Tart crumbs. But anyway, we start with six slices of bread, preferably like my dating life. Stale. Remove the crusts. If you're over the age of six and you still do this, good for you. Don't let anyone tell you how to eat. Move to a bowl. Save the crusts. Add a cup of oats and a can of evaporated milk. The meat remains unseen. Perhaps it's waiting for marriage. Papa! Two teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of Poultry seasoning. I'm not sure if anyone told you, but beef is a cow. You know the mooing? <laughs> Time for just a pound of ground beef. Mm. Mix thoroughly. Mm. <laughs> this is more grain than meat. Get it? Then we add ketchup. <laughs> Press in the bread crusts. Railroad track looking Union Pacific meatloaf. And finally, more ketchup. Bake this in a moderate oven for an hour. Mmm. Mmm. Uh, that is unpleasant. It tastes like it's saving me money. Hard times. Poor man's rice from 79. How do you make rice without rice? I say it's impossible, but our friends from the 70s disagree. We start with a third cup of water. I hate third cups. I don't have a reason and I don't need one. Three eggies. Mm. Water and eggs. How very rice-like. Pinch of salt. Two cups of flour. I don't know where this is going either. Probably downhill. We're looking for a breadcrumb consistency. Not me. I'm looking for why. I thought rice was the poor man's food. I would know. I have a music degree. Time for hands. More flour if needed. What? Done. I think. I don't know. Now into a very large pot goes three quarts of water. Mm. Stock cubes. I'm using beef. Fire! Get in! Ugh. It's like the world's worst oatmeal. Cook for 12 minutes. What? I don't... Mm. Um... What? It's not unpleasant. It tastes like overcooked pasta. It feels like oatmeal and looks terrible. It evokes nothing of rice and I don't know why this exists. The Great Northern Nut Loaf from 49. Now I'm not sure what makes this loaf northern, I just picked it because it has the most nuts I've ever seen. And I've seen my fair share. We start with nuts, which is unusual. In my experience, that normally comes last. We need one pound of mixed pecans and filberts. Filberts are hazelnuts, and they are my second favorite nut. My favorite doesn't come from a plant. Now I need to flour the nuts with three quarters of a cup of flour. You know, I do prefer them deflowered. A pinch of salt. Only a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. This is not going to rise, which is always embarrassing. Into a separate bowl goes three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Miller. Three eggies. Beat with a whisk. Never tried that before. Sounds painful. Finally, a half pound of dried figs. You know, fruit and nuts do go hand in hand. I would know. I'm both. Combine the two. <laughs> it's literally just nuts. 300 for 80 minutes. Done. Woo. Hmm. Whoa. It's a great taste. Nice and moist, but very crunchy. If you hate nuts, I can see you spitting it out. Not me. Clam biscuits from 1974. Now I love biscuits and I love clams, but do they belong together? Well, as my parents tried explaining to a 12-year-old me when they divorced, probably not. We begin with two cups of flour, three teaspoons of floof powder, then two tablespoons of shortening. Vegetable shortenings are great for when you want something like butter, but worse. Please get off the spoon. Please, sir. Mix with hands. In goes a half cup of moo juice, then a can of minced clams. <laughs> Little strange, fam, but you do you. Ooh. Yep, the, those are clams. Oh, it wants the juice, too! Ooh. Mix! Drop these into a muffin pan. So are they biscuits or are they muffins? What are you? That's what I used to ask my sexuality in high school. Hello! Ooh. Butter. Mmm. Mm. I see. I'm getting a top note of cat food. Like someone dropped a biscuit in a fish tank. Yeah, those taste like low tide. That is to say, New Englanders would love it. Liver cakes from 1947. <clears throat> so the liver is an organ which collects and filters all of the toxins from an animal throughout their lifetime. So why we prance about and eat it is beyond me. With that being said, I've never tried it. Until now. Into a pot of water goes a pound of calf's liver. <clears throat> this recipe asks for calf or mutton liver. But when I asked about mutton liver to the butcher, he just asked if I was okay. Fire! While that boils, we need a quarter cup of breadcrumbs, flour, salt, pepper, plus dried sage, and onion. Then we drain what? I don't want to do this! Mince the liver! Ugh. You know I used to have a sock like this? This is disgusting. <laughs> Two eggies! Get in! Now we make patties. <laughs> what do you think we fry these in? Lard! Let me get my lard bucket. <laughs> and you just... <laughs> Lemon lard with liver and lard. <laughs> There's something deviant about this. It tastes like metal. I don't like that.
avocado ice cream from 1947. This is fascinating because it seems chronologically wrong to find this in a 1940s cookbook, which means it must be pretty special or that time-traveling keto athleisure influencers exist. You know, people who follow strange concepts like exercise. Into a saucepan goes a half cup of sugar, a pinch of salt, and two cups of milk. Moon juice! Now we scald this, so bring it to a simmer, but not a boil. Fire! <laughs> Into a separate bowl goes two eggs. While whisking, we cook the eggs by slowly pouring in the hot milk. In goes a cup of heavy cream and two avocados mashed. I'm going to force mine through a sieve. And finally, the juice of a lemon. Beat thoroughly. Just freeze until firm. Good morning. Am I really about to have ice cream for breakfast? It's destiny. Whoa! Yes, that that works. It's really quite nice. It is a bit icy, more of a sherbet, but it's a no-churn, so I can't complain. It is a lovely, delicate taste. The dump cake from 68. So post-World War II saw the invention of the cake mix, but for some Americans that was still too much work. And so the dump cake was invented. Let's take a dump. Directly into an oiled baking dish goes 20 ounces of pie filling. Goodbye, cherry! Then we just dump cake mix on top. This is sacrilegious. Preposterous. Daft. Melt a cup of butter. Then you just dump that on too. Then you get to bake your dump. Golly gee. 375 for 50 minutes. This is for people who hate baking. And I don't like those people. We have a done dump. It's fresh. <clears throat> fresh dump. Uh. It's an unenthusiastic cobbler. I mean, yeah, it's all right, but it's all wrong. If you're going to bake, bake. A cake should be an occasion. Not a disfigured dump on a plate. Pound cake from 1904. Pound cake is one of my favorite things to do, but I'm single, so it's been a while. It's called such because the traditional recipe is a pound each of butter, sugar, eggs, and flour. Nothing else. We start by beating the butter. <laughs> now we slowly cream in a pound of sugar. Oh boy! Now I'm beating and creaming by hand because as any man could tell you, that's how we all first learned. <laughs> Good heavens. How many eggs? Nine. We beat them in gradually. This is wild. And finally, the flour. <laughs> Fold into a bunt. We bake this in a moderately slow oven for 80 to 100 minutes. Hello. <laughs> I really just JFK'd this cake. Man, that's wonderful. For something that doesn't have any flavoring at all, you would not believe it. With a texture like nothing else. It's very good. But we don't talk about this. Avocado bread from 73. Yes, it seems that before millennials discovered avocado on toast, their forefathers wanted to skip a few steps and just put the avocado directly in the bread. We're gonna see if they were onto something. Of course, they were onto a lot of things back then. We begin with two very ripe avocados. Time to open you up. Good morning. <laughs> Now in goes three quarters of a cup of sugar. So the avocado is the only source of fat in this recipe, so instead of creaming sugar into butter, we're just creaming the fruit, which is something I happen to be familiar with. <laughs> Time for three, oh, hmm, well, three eggs. Beat thoroughly. For the dry ingredients, we mix together two cups of flour with one and a half teaspoons of floof powder. That's baking powder. <laughs> Combine the two, fold, in you go. We seem to be baking guacamole. 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes. Whoa, look at how good it looks. Woo! <laughs> no way. Woo! This tastes amazing. I'm so confused. Because there's no butter, there's no oil, there's no milk, just fruit. A poor man's pie from 1949. Now this has to be the simplest pie recipe I've seen during my time on this earth. <laughs> I'm not even sure this is going to make a pie. But first, pastry. Good afternoon, Mr. Pastry. How you been? How's the wife? How, How you like that? Welcome to the real world. For the filling, <laughs> for the filling, we have a pint of cream, cup of sugar, three tablespoons of flour, and that's it. <laughs> if this is a pie filling, then I'm Captain America. And then in it goes. We do get to sprinkle nutmeg on top. How extravagant. In this goes at 425 until it sets like a custard. I have no idea. It looks upset. Hmm. Well, it's great. So long as you don't have to eat it. <laughs> it's sweet goop. I don't get it. Because now I'm still a poor man just with a mediocre pie. Magic cinnamon sticks from 63. So this recipe finds a good use for ready-made pie crust mix. But of course you could use any leftover pie pastry you have or make your own if you enjoy that type of low-level anxiety. One pie crust mix. And this one needs five tablespoons of cold water. You gotta mix it with your fingies. Done! Roll this into a thin rectangle. 
Now we sprinkle some coarse sugar on both sides, pressing it in with your rolling pin. I like sugar. Get in! Now into three tablespoons of melted butter goes six teaspoons of simonium mix. And then on it goes. This is very satisfying. I like you. Fold this in half and cut into strips. They're so cute. Now twist and onto a baking sheet. We bake these at 350 for about 20 minutes. Oh, yes! Oh, I like a cookie. Mm. Hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to eat all of these. A Hoover stew from the Great Depression. Now it stands to reason that this dish was named after the 31st president of the United States, a vacuum. This was the economical way to feed your family during a time where people were pinching pennies until Lincoln wept. Water! Salt! Fire! In goes a pound of macaroni. Now we slice a pound of hot dogs as thin as coins. Ah yes, brings back memories. <laughs> Time to drain the pasta. Into a large pot goes two pounds of stewed tomatoes, a pound of canned corn and the juice. Add in the hot dogs and simmer for 10 minutes. Dylan, you say, did people not have spices in the Great Depression? No, they didn't. <laughs> Refer to depression. Mm, this is so much food. Hmm. yep. Is it bland? Yes. Is it bad? No. Especially when you consider that all of this cost me six dollars. Impressive. A Valentine's cream pie from 59. Mm-hmm. Now I can't think of anything better for Valentine's Day than a good old-fashioned cream pie. And this one features the maraschino cherry pastry. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. For the pie pan, we're going to want a nine inch. I know I do too. If you've got one, don't just force it in. Be gentle. Now whether or not to edge is up to you. Some people aren't that patient. Blind bake at 425 for 15 minutes. Mm. This finished a bit early. Happens to the best of us. Into a saucepan goes a cup of sugar. Quarter cup cornstarch. Two eggies. Two cups of moo juice. Quarter cup of cherry juice. Hopefully it'll be pink. Bring this to a boil and stir constantly. Fire! If your hand gets tired, just keep going. I'm single, so I'm used to it. Once it's thickened, we remove from heat and add in a half cup of chopped cherries. In you go. To the fridge. Next, a cup of cream whipped. Some people are into that. <laughs> now we get to top. That's always fun. Mmm, mmm, I like that. Very sweet, but I like it. El Corno from the Great Depression. What is the cheapest food was the question asked at the height of the Depression. So food scientists at Cornell came up with this. We start with a cup of cornmeal. So far, so good. Then a half cup of powdered milk. That didn't last long. A teaspoon of salt. Mix into a saucepan with three cups of water. Chunky. Bring to a prolonged boil. Fire! Just how prolonged is this boil? <laughs> It's done. Mm. Now, if this were to be your dinner, you'd add some tomato sauce and some pepper. For dessert, a touch of molasses. And simmon him! Mmm. 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 Tastes like a wet blanket. They're all so sad. Like depressed polenta. Oatmeal that needs therapy. Unemployed grits. Peanut butter bread from the Great Depression. Now the Depression was rough, and while some people like it that way, the world of baking didn't. Butter, sugar, and eggs were scarce, but there was shelf-stable peanut butter. Start with two cups of flour, a pinch of salt, only a quarter cup of sugar, and four teaspoons of baking powder. Instead of typo. We want the bread to rise, not generate thrust. On this episode, a bread goes to space. Mix. In goes one and a third cup of moo juice. That's milk. Now the half cup of peanut butter. You know, Peter Pan came out in 1928. Brave king. I wait until 2019. Get him! Fold! I don't know about this. There's not much to it. Now Bake at 325 for about an hour and 10 minutes. Well, it smells divine! <laughs> That's a good crumb. Man. This is stellar. It's perfectly peanut buttery and sweet. Mm-hmm. So good with so little. This is why I bake. Broiled humdingers from 1967. Don't ask. This is a spam recipe, one of mid-century America's favorite things, right up there next to big cars and being prejudiced. First up, we put our can of spam in a blender. It's gonna be one of those days, huh? Mmm, perfect. If this red flag was any bigger, it would be a blanket. Mm. <laughs> to the ground spam, we add a teaspoon of mustard plus two tablespoons of ketchup, which is spelled catsup. Why? Quarter cup of moo juice and a half cup of oats. I just don't understand. Are there worse things than this? Doubt it. You know, jokes aside, I'm, I'm quite disturbed by this. The next step is to strain our can of halved peaches. Of course it is. The epitome of logic. I think I'm becoming jaded. Peaches onto a baking sheet. Form some patties. Squish. 
Broil these on the top rack for 10 minutes. Maybe they'll disappear. Well, some didn't make it, which is unfortunate because it means some did. Mm. Well, that was utterly horrendous. Thank you. A baked bean pizza from 1954. Now I'm scared of lots of things, including the IRS, clowns, and English majors. But I'm most afraid of beans where they don't belong. Oh dear. The sauce begins with a can of tomato paste. <clears throat> plus eight ounces of spaghetti sauce. Really starting out on the wrong foot. More like the wrong limb. Add oregano for an authentic taste. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in Italy. For the crust, we squash together refrigerator biscuits. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying about authentic? On goes the sauce. A bit of Parmesan. Now 20 ounces of baked beans. What part of Italy are you from? Kentucky? In the center, some fresh mozzarella. How to get an entire country to hate you. Step one, this. 425 for 10, then 325 for 20. No. We can serve this with anchovies or sardines. How about a swift death? Oh. What? Mm, what is wrong with you? Mm. You are sick. Mm. It's just vile. An impossible pie from 1969. Some things are naturally impossible, like perpetual motion or happy AT&T customers, but apparently this pie makes itself. <laughs> First you get your blender. <laughs> it's good to be back. Then simply add a half cup of butter, cup of sugar, two cups of moo juice, oh God. four egg geese, cup of shredded coconut, half a cup of flour, and some dinner. Now we blend, cause why not? Let's hope this doesn't kill the blender. <laughs> And that's it! Mm. While this bakes, it apparently forms its own crust and layers. I have my doubts. 350 for an hour. Done! <laughs> Enough! Cool. And then to the fridge. Hello. <laughs> Impossible! It did it! Formed its own pie. Mmm! Coconut and vanilla. How did that work? You crazy old people. The Christmas fruitcake from 1900. So I've never made a fruitcake, but if you're anything like me, you are one. <laughs> Start with one and a half cups of butter and three cups of brown sugar. <clears throat> half cup of treacle and six eggs. How big is this cake? Four and a half cups of flour, nutmeg, cloves, allspice, cinnamon, in. plus one and a half teaspoons of fluff powder. Get in. I present to you the fruit. The mix is eight ounces each of candied orange peel, pineapple, cherries, dried figs, currants, dates, raisins, all soaked in an obscene amount of brandy. Look away, kids. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> It's been festering for a few days. Three cups of walnuts. This is ridiculous. <laughs> a lot of fruit, brandy, and nuts. Sounds like a good weekend. 300 for two hours. Done. Now time for a cheesecloth and more brandy. <laughs> well, there goes that. And now we just wait. <laughs> Ooh. I feel like I'm exhuming a body. Hello. Mm. Well, it's very moist and very potent. Don't feed too much to Grandpa, he won't make it down the stairs. Love it or hate it, it's the taste of Christmas. And that's quite fine by me. Peppermint patties from 1946. Now, I didn't know that one could make these at home. I thought it was a closely guarded industrial process, but apparently not. Take that, big peppermint. We start with one cup of sweetened condensed milk. In goes one and a half teaspoons of peppermint extract. Be very careful with this. The stuff's stronger than my desire to drop out of college. Slowly add five to five and a half cups of powdered sugar. Christmas time means sugar time. You can use a stand mixer. I'm just easily frightened by machinery. <laughs> Done. Now you might need more or less powdered sugar. You're just looking for a workable dough. Parchment. More powdered sugar. <laughs> Hello, Dolly. <laughs> to the freezer. Now over a double boiler, we melt four cups of chocolate. Adding to it two teaspoons of shortening. Get off of the spoon. Fire. Then once your chocolate is melted and your patties are firm, you take a fork and then woo, it's a little bit messy. They don't stop. To the fridge. Mm. Woo. Yes. Look at that. You can do that. 10 out of 10. How are these so perfect? Christmas crack from the 70s. Now, if it weren't already obvious by the name, this recipe hails from the USA, where it is a Christmas staple. They do things differently around here. We start with a whole sleeve of saltine crackers. I'm guessing that's where the name comes from, which is disappointing. We line these up flat over some good foil. Now into a saucepan goes one cup of butter and one cup of brown sugar. Fire! We're boiling for five minutes. Bubble, bubble. Now we pour this over the crackers. Mm, with the saltine. Oh dear. Then 350 for seven minutes. As soon as these come out of the oven, we top with a whole bag of chalky chips. <laughs> then spread. Ooh, I see what you're working with. Then you can top this with whatever you want. I'm gonna use walnuts. <laughs> to the fridge. Done. Hello. And now we crack the sheet. <laughs> the name is making a lot more sense now. Hmm.
Ooh. Mmm. My goodness. <laughs> America, you've done it again. This is fantastic. Eggnog from 1895. So eggnog is already one of my favorite things, but homemade is supposedly 10 times better. Oh by gosh, by golly. We start with the yolks of five eggs. Save the whites. Then we whisk in sugar. Doesn't tell me how much, so I'm gonna use a cup. It's Christmas. Yes, I will be calling this eggy nog. Now we add two cups of moo juice and one cup of heavy cream to a cauldron. Sorry, my cauldron's in the dishwasher. Seven him four cloves. Fire! We're scalding, not boiling. Then we temper the eggs with about half of this mixture. And then back you go. Low heat until thick. Done. Strain it. Not today, cloves. Egg whites. Come on, time for mixing. Mm. Just a touch of sugar. Fold nutmeg. Now, if you're not comfortable with raw egg whites, you can heat this whole mixture back up, but it won't be as fluffy. To the fridge. Oh, it's thick. More nutmeg. <laughs> oh, dear. This has ruined all other eggnog. Delicious. It's life-changing. It's Christmas. Corn cookies from 1930. Now, if cornmeal were to end up in my sugar cookie dough, I would consider that a mistake, but these people have done it on purpose. Do you know what that's called? Criminal intent. We begin by creaming a half cup of margarine with a half cup of sugar. They say using softened margarine is ideal. No, honey, what's ideal is not using margarine. One egg. So far, so good. And then came the cornmeal. Cornmeal and a sugar cookie. What a bright idea. Oh, cornmeal on the floor. I'm going to start needing blood pressure medication. Three quarters of a cup and half a cup of flour. Mix. Now we form a log. Come on. Be a good corn log. To the ice box. You are frozen. And now we roll it in cornmeal. Cookies. Eight minutes at 375. Huh? Whoa. This is lovely. It's a sugar cookie with a bachelor's degree. Bravo. Spaghetti O Jello ring from the 60s. Now I've been unable to confirm whether or not this recipe actually existed in the 60s. Not that I particularly want to, but seemingly everybody and their dog has sent me this. <laughs> Into a saucepan goes a quarter cup of tomato soup, quarter cup of water. Now two packs of gelatin. Wonder what demon will summon today. Fire! <laughs> now that this is completely smooth, we remove from heat and add two cans of SpaghettiOs. Is life insurance expensive? Into a bunt. Oh. Good night. Ooh! Did I mention there were sausages? Cause there are sausages. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. Mm. Oh. It's like, it's like a morgue. I need a hug. A Fiesta Peach Spam Bake from 1954. Yes, folks, Thanksgiving is soon upon us, which means plenty of family drama, so I say why not just cut to the chase, serve this, and make everybody visibly upset. We begin by draining a can of sliced peaches. Save the syrup. Time for spam. Nothing says the holidays like ambiguous meat. Please exit. Now we slice it lengthwise, four times, but don't go all the way through. Stut the spam with cloves. Are you joking? You're not joking. <laughs> Ridiculous. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. 2021's been a rough year. <laughs> Mercy. Now we insert the peaches into the spam. Open up. Time to receive peaches. To the quarter cup of peach syrup, we add two tablespoons of brown sugar. Are you aware that the syrup is sugar? Mm. Now that's just vulgar. Add the peaches. 375 for 35 minutes. Oh dear. Why do I keep doing this? That's not a good laugh, because this tastes like if Christmas gave up. Frozen orange juice pie from 53. Now, I've seldom heard of orange-flavored pies, likely because it's a bad idea, but Betty Crocker doesn't think so. Pastry! Hello! You were misshapen. Pop it! Then we form this to a pie dish, and eight inch is preferable. It sure is, Betty. Mmm. <laughs> Eight minutes at 475. Now we dilute our frozen orange juice concentrate with just one can of water. What are you looking at? Into a saucepan, a cup of sugar, quarter cup cornstarch. Done! Half cup of OJ. Slowly whisking in until boiling. Fire! The yolks of two eggs. Temper the eggs. Get back in. After a minute, remove from heat and add two tablespoons of butter. Meringue? What are you doing, Betty? The two egg whites. Quarter cup of sugar. Stiff. Get in. So the pie's not frozen, is it, Betty? No, it was just the orange juice. 400 for 10 minutes. Looks a bit sad. Hmm. Whoa. It's an orange meringue pie. With really bad oranges. No. Amish lard cakes from 1895. Lard, 100% solid pig fat, a disturbing concept, and we're going to fry a dessert in it. Start with one and a half cups of sour milk. They mean buttermilk. Full cup of heavy cream. Oh my. Two eggs. 
Oh, this is thick! One and a half teaspoons of floof soda. Pinch of salt. Add flour until we get a pie dough consistency. I don't know what type of pie dough you're dealing with. Disturbingly dense. And now we heat two pounds of lard for deep frying. Pounds! Just get out of the box, please. Let's go, big boy. Wait, you didn't tell me what shape they are. When in doubt, triangles. I'm not ready. Just flip. Cooperate. You are... Oh my god. Hello, lard triangle. You were swimming in animal fat. How does it feel? Then we roll them in sugar. Ooh. That in my stomach like a bowling ball. The dominant flavor is saturated fat. No spices, just cream and... I have a sudden urge to hibernate. A millionaire pie from 59. I tell you, I could never be a millionaire. I'd end up buying like 3,000 Pop-Tarts. Or ducks. I quite like ducks. To one and a half cups of graham cracker crumbs, we add a quarter cup of sugar. Half a cup of melted butter. So it begins the graham cracker crust. Uniformities of utmost importance. Blind bake the shell at 375 for 15 minutes. Blind baking is when you put the shell in the oven with a <laughs> One can of sweetened condensed milk. Pound of crushed pineapple. Drained, of course. Cup of sweetened coconut. How much sugar do you want in this? A jar of chopped maraschino cherries. A lot. Beep at me one more time. So sticky. How are they so red? In go the cherries and a quarter of the juice. Half cup of chopped pecans. Juice of a lemon. Yee. To top it off, in goes a tub of Cool Whip. Hope y'all know some dentists. Good night. Good morning. You are pink. Whoa, Nelly. Woo. I say, this is camp. I don't hate it. Over the top, outdated mid-century camp. Hard tack from the Civil War. Yes, whether it's expeditions, famines, wars, or student debt, this is what we bake in times of crisis. We start with two cups of flour, half cup of water. I bet you thought there was more. Nope, there's not. That's right, this is the most basic recipe in the history of history. Talk about stretching a dollar. This is some spandex level stretch. Oh, you're gluten free? Sorry, all we have is gluten. We cut them into sad little squares. Time to poke some holes. You know, these kind of look like graham crackers if graham crackers were made out of drywall. We then bake these boys at 250 for upwards of four hours to remove most of the moisture. And that's how these will last longer than even the most talented of men. Dude, these are roof tiles. Well, this is a first. <laughs> Y'all really said Ford tough. Just aggressive. I mean, it doesn't taste bad, it's bread. Danger bread, but bread. Now, of course, you shouldn't eat them dry, but the taste is the same. Apple cider cookies from 1973. Yes, we humans have been baking with apples since the first time somebody baked with an apple. And today, we're gonna be continuing that tradition. Start with three quarters of a cup of butter. That's a lot of butter, Miss Pillsbury. One cup of bronze sugar. Half cup of sugar. Sugar. Full disclosure, I picked this recipe because it looked good. I don't always like to destroy my taste buds, you know. But I go Bleh! One, eight, eight. Now for two cups of flour, pinch of salt, teaspoon of floof soda, that's baking soda, and apple pie spice. What's apple pie spice? Let me tell you. Half teaspoon of nutmeg, allspice, ground ginger, ground cardamom, and two teaspoons of simonium. Oh dear. It's gonna be a little simonium heavy. <laughs> now we finally chop an apple of our choosing. I chose this one. To die. Quarter cup of apple cider. Get in. It's not November yet, so we're cleared for some optional nuts. Mix. Chill time. Boop. 350 for about 17 minutes. Hello, little ones. It's time for icing. Three tablespoons of melted butter. Third of a cup of cider. Then we add powdered sugar until it's thick. Oh, oh yes, you will love these. They are the taste of the season. A ration cake from World War II. So it's the 40s and we don't have any butter, sugar, milk, or eggs and we need to make a cake. What do we do? Panic! Into a saucepan goes two cups of raisins plus one cup of water. In the interests of civil defense, we look to raisins to substitute our sugar. So you want me to boil raisins? It ain't easy being a patriot. Fire! This is awful. A half cup of lard. Just give up. Don't make a cake. <laughs> a whole cup of molasses. No, th this is not worth it. It's not. Looks like barbecue sauce. Smells of death. For the dry ingredients, we need one and a half cups of flour. Half teaspoon of baking soda. And the only spice we get is cloves. Cloves. <laughs> it's always the cloves. Mash the raisins. It's been nice knowing you. This would make me enlist. Mm, get in. <laughs> get off. 325 for an hour. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, ma'am. Just no. Ooh. Baked apple.
apples from the Great Depression. Yes, folks, fall has fallen and it can't get up. So nothing quite says autumn like an apple, except pumpkin or seasonal depression. First, we core the apples. I'm using Honeycrisp apples, but you guys can use whatever you want except for the red mushy ones. Those are for psychopaths. Make sure not to go all the way through. For the filling, we need some sugar. Simming him. And if they can be afforded, oats. <laughs> Living large tonight, boys! We got oats! I'm not making fun of the Great Depression. I am making fun of the Great Depression. <laughs> Into a baking dish. <laughs> Pat of butter on top. And finally, a bit of water. 350 for a half hour. So they look dead, but my house smells amazing. I would bake this just for this smell. For Breeze who? Now how do I eat it? <laughs> Fall. Winter. Fireplaces. Beautiful. The very definition of simple yet brilliant. Anzac biscuits from the Great War. In Australia and New Zealand, this recipe is actually protected by law. Bake it wrong. To jail! I mean, not really, but you wouldn't want to get them angry. They have kangaroos. One cup of oats. I love oats. They taste like grandparents. I mean, they don't taste like- You know what I mean! One cup of flour. Then one cup of desiccated coconut. Not shredded, not sweetened. I'm talking dried flakes. Gonna need some head and shoulders for that. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. Now into a saucepan goes 10 tablespoons of butter. I did have to convert this entire recipe from grams into freedom units. Then a quarter cup of golden syrup. Fire! Once the butter melts, we remove and add a teaspoon of baking soda. This is weird. Mm, it's foamy. Mm, mix. 350 for 12 minutes. Oh, boy, howdy. Crispy but chewy. Good biscuit. A sawdust pie from 75. Now normally if you're looking for a mouthful of wood, you just go to a sawmill. Or tinder. But here we find it in a pie. Pastry! <laughs> Hello, child. <laughs> Goodbye, child. Unlike life, the filling is very easy. Just one and a half cups each of sugar, graham cracker crumbs, shredded coconut, and chopped pecans. Remember, on the internet, both pecan and pecan are wrong. You can't win. You might as well call them pecans. Or Margaret. Finally, the whites of six egg- We don't beat the egg whites, though. We're pacifiers. Nope, we're not pacifiers. Pacifists. Mix. Get in the pie. 350 for a half hour. Never been down here, have you? Welcome. Looks problematic. Huh. That's a hard one. It's cakey, gooey, chewy, and crunchy. It's not bad. It's eclectic. A roughage loaf from 1892. Now my first thought was who comes up with this? And then I took a look at the front. My man looks like he does taxes for fun. We start with an entire cup of wheat germ. Roughage is what dead people call fiber. And this is enough to incapacitate one medium child. Half a cup of flaxseed. You sure this wasn't meant for a bird? One cup of buttermilk. And a cup of molasses. This takes a while to come out. Don't worry, I did too. Mm. Then we leave this to soak for half hour, just to make it edible. Half cup of prunes. No, of course it's the prunes. What else would it be? This man's really out here making people B-52 their toilets. This is either gonna plug you up or bring the morning thunder. Your boy said friendly fire. Cup of whole wheat flour. Have you no mercy? A teaspoon of floof soda. Get in, prunes! Ugh. This is culinary terrorism! 350 for 40 minutes. When I tell you that this is a brick, I mean it. It is a piece of masonry. Ooh. Tastes like a bookshelf. Books included. That is bad. Deep fried cookie dough from 71. It's known that here in America, they'll deep fry anything that isn't bolted to the earth, including zucchinis, hot dogs, and several species of large bird. To a half cup of butter, we add two thirds of a cup of sugar. You come into my house. One and one third cup flour. And a cup of chalky chips. Mix. There's no floofers! They don't bake these, they'll go be flatter than my butt. Chill time! Now for the batter, we need a cup and a quarter of flour. A teaspoon of floof powder. Quarter cup of sugar. One cup of moo juice! Then a tablespoon of vegetable oil. You don't want any lumps. I fry with peanut oil, because it's correct. Are you ready to die? Yeah, me too. One, two, three. Mm, man, this looks incredible. This is perfection. I don't know what else you want me to say. Whoopsie! They're gone! A Snickers salad from 1974. Yes, this is one of these salads, which definitely isn't a salad because America is unsupervised and they can't be stopped. We start by chopping 10 ounces worth of Snickers bars. Hey Dylan, what you doing? Oh, I'm just making my salad. You know, with the, with the chocolate bars. Come on. Cup of cold milk. Mood juice! Two packs of vanilla pudding. Uh... Four Granny Smith apples. That's for what? Solidarity? Granny don't deserve this. Whatever happened to respect your elders? Now into the pudding goes a tub of Cool Whip. Because we don't give a shit. In goes the apples. And the Snickers. Oh. 
You don't measure this in calories, no. You measure this in years taken off of your life expectancy. For best results, chill. You need to chill! <laughs> Is it good? No. Is it bad? No. It's sugar! Go ahead, feed this to a child. You're gonna yeet them into orbit. Goodbye, Johnny. Post-terrestrial. Where's Johnny? Johnny is gone. A date cream from 55. Now, if you've never had a date before, I'm sorry. You must be very lonely. But this is what they look like, and now you're looking at two fruits. We need one cup chopped. Very sticky. And this, gentlemen, is what happens when we get old. Cup of sugar. Quarter cup of cornstarch. Quarter cup of moo juice. What are we making, glue? Two cups of scalded milk. Ha! Boil vigorously! Mm. Now we cook for 10 minutes over a double boiler. No clue. I've never made a date cream before. <laughs> I've never cooked a date cream before. The yolks of three eggs. <laughs> Temper first. Get in! Mix! Cool it down with three tablespoons of butter. The dates. Nilla. To the fridge. Good evening. It's dark. This is solid. Hello? Whoa. Whoa. What? This is blowing my mind. This tastes amazing. But I am more astounded as to how we ended up with ice cream in the fridge. Potato chip cookies from 76. Now sweet and salty things aren't anything new. You have classics like PB&J, chicken and waffles, fake friends, your in-laws. But this is crazy. One cup of butter, a cup and a quarter of sugar, cream. No, that would be very indecent. Butter go butter. Aren't you fluffy? Two eggy teaspoon of vanilla. Now's when we smash eight ounces of potato chips. Mm. Goodbye. Look who's fallen from grace. Shame. Two cups of flour. Three teaspoons of fluff powder. <laughs> now in goes half of the potato chips. And a cup of chocolate chips. Oh, that's crunchy. Chill time. We're gonna roll the dough in the potato chips. <laughs> You're insane. 15 minutes at 3.50. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the potatoes, a whole bag of potato chips. It's phenomenal. Wow. A blancmange from 1901. Now, blancmange literally translates to white dish, and judging by the lack of spices here, it certainly is uh, Caucasian. We start with one and a half pounds of almond milk. Since I'm not daft, I've converted that to three cups, one of which goes into a saucepan. The gentle peel of a lemon. Easy there, Shakespeare. Serenium! Nope, I lied. Sticks of serenium! Ah! Half cup of sugar, quarter cup of cornstarch, then the two cups of almond milk. Vigorous whisking! What counts as vigorous? Now that this is simmering, we add this in. I have no idea what's going on. No! It's all thick! Call the police! No spices for you! Now into serving dishes. How specific? Into the ice box overnight. Well, I don't have an ice box because I'm living. Best I can do is a fridge. Good morning. Mm. Whatever I was expecting, it wasn't this. There's no jello in here, just the dark arts. Oh. Hmm. Taste is good. It's like Christmas, but it's unpleasantly slimy. Bizarre. Chocolate cottage cheese cookies from 1955. This was given to me by my friend Shelby. It's called Quick Dishes for the Woman in a Hurry. In a hurry to take a dump. We start with a cup of margarine. It's like butter, but terrible. Two cups of sugar. Now we beat. That tracks for the 50s. Two eggies. Then an entire cup of cottage cheese. I hate cottage cheese. It looks like it's listening to me. Chunky! For dry ingredients, we need three cups of flour, a teaspoon of floof powder, and a half teaspoon of floof soda. Half cup of cocoa! Get in! Finish with nuts. Don't have to ask me twice. Mix! Ten minutes, 3.50. Hello. Oh? Now that's just a good cookie. It is distinctly different, but good. A jellied meatloaf from 1931. We begin with a pound of ground beef. You don't want the sky beef, that would be scary. Fire! Who's mooing now? Strain it and let it cool. It's not dinner time until you add a pack of gelatin to some water. Mmm. Onion and celery. 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 <laughs> you know what stings more than a knife, Mr. Onion? Rejection. Now two cups of chicken stock. Time to boil. <laughs> Strain the stock into the gelatin. No veggies allowed! Thank you for your service. Mm. Now that this is thick, we add in the beef, pimentos, and then we mix. This is revolting. No, no, no. What a joy. Mm. To the fridge. Good morning. Oh! <laughs> Cheese Jello salad from 68. That's not a typo. This is deliberate. Someone published this. 
and got paid for it. Let's not make assumptions, though. We begin with a pint of cottage cheese, followed by a can of crushed pineapple. Well drained, of course, like my hope. Next, we joyously sprinkle in an entire packet of lime jello. <laughs> can I start making assumptions now? Come on. Ma'am, do you, do you know what a salad is? Because whatever you think, it's, it's wrong. Lastly, we fold in a tub of Cool Whip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To the fridge. At least nothing hatched. Ma'am, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no. It's, ju it's just disrespectful. A pickled cheesecake from 72. It says this cheesecake stands out because it's savory. You don't think it has anything to do with the pickles? We start with a pretzel crust. <laughs> Melted margarine. Mm. Time for the filling. Pound of cream cheese. Cup of sour cream. Goat cheese. And some pickle juice. Beat until soft. Honey, I don't need instructions. I'm single. Egg. Parmesan. Garlic. Onion powder. And red pepper flakes. At least it's hot garbage. Now for the star of the show, an entire cup of dill pickles. Mm. Smooth top. Yes. 45 minutes at 3.50. Good night. Oh boy. Mm. What is that? No, it, it's a demon quiche. A crusty, crusty <laughs> spam bake from 1965. <laughs> you guys are gonna be the end of me. To start, we're gonna need some cornflakes. Promise, I'm not making this up. In your bag. No crumbs. Now we get our can. Oh. We get our can of spam and we cry. Slice into eight pieces using a knife. Thanks for that tip. I was in danger of using a spoon. To the cornflake crumbs, we add two tablespoons of brown sugar and a dash of cloves. Because why not go full manic? Drain a can of pineapple slices and brush with butter. Just another day in America. Mm. Coat the spam slices in mustard. No, don't make... Mm. <laughs> 20 minutes at 3.50. Hmm. All right. It, that ain't it. A gooey butter cake from the 1930s. We start with a cup of flour. Third cup of butter. Paper. Dash of sugar. You have to look like breadcrumbs. I don't know what type of bread y'all eating. We then press this into a square pan and cast aside, which is dead people talk for put it away. Time for the filling. That's the perfect name for a baking themed only fan. First is three quarters cup butter. Cup and a quarter of sugar. Butter go butter. One egg. Poppin'. Now we alternate between adding a cup of flour and because it's the 1930s, two thirds of a cup of evaporated milk. Flour. Ooh. Quarter cup corn syrup. Will be done by Christmas. Nilla. Oops. That's a lot of nilla. I'm guessing the flavor profile is going to be cholesterol. Powdered sugar. 350 for a half hour. You know, some dishes aren't amazing, but they are innately comforting. And this is a prime example, like a hug on a plate. Wow. Chocolate zucchini bread from 1968. Now when I think of zucchini, I think of good barbecues, summer salads, men, just not dessert. But we start such a dessert with a cup of flour, half cup of cuckoo, chocolate bite, and a teaspoon of floof soda. Now we melt a quarter cup of margarine. Beep. A quarter cup of an oil of my choosing. I'm guessing 10W30 wouldn't work. A cup of brown sugar. Two eggy. For the zucchini, we need one and a half cup shredded skin and all. I hate zucchini. Doesn't taste bad, it just makes me feel insufficient. Wet! Dry! Meh! This isn't just a chocolate cake recipe with a bit of zucchini, no. This has more zucchini than flour. 50 minutes at 3.50. Goodness gracious! Cease and desist! Come on. It's really quite brilliant. It deepens the chocolate. Keeps it nice and moist. I don't make the rules. Magic mayo from 1951. What is magic mayo besides a mistake? I don't know, but the first ingredient is sweetened condensed milk. Don't worry though, it's only two thirds of a cup into a jar. It'll just take 12 years. Quarter cup of olive oil. Quarter cup of vinegar. The yolk of one egg. I find this incredible because mayonnaise is actually dairy free, yet these people have managed to turn this into a lactose bonanza. We finish up with a pinch of salt. Cayenne. And ground mustard. Now we seal and shake vigorously, preferably to kill whatever demon we've summoned. <laughs> you know, I used to like mason jars. Then came gentrification. To the fridge. Okay. Mm. Well, that's awful, but nobody eats mayonnaise by itself. Mm. Oh, no! It tastes like sunscreen!
Fried crackers from the Great Depression. These are also called cracker flitters. What is a flitter? I don't know. Nobody knows. We begin with two sleeves of saltines. America's favorite sawdust squares. Cover and soak these with water. Mm. Granny's favorite soggy crackers. Mm. Now we squeeze and drain it. Mm. Just imagine cooking this and trying to tell yourself that everything is okay. One eggy. Now we heat up a skillet with what? A suitable amount of lard. There is no suitable amount of lard. Never has been, never will be. Fire! And then we just... Yeah! Try not to die. How long does sadness take to cook? And finally, we douse in maple syrup. <laughs> that is surprisingly good. Seriously, give this a try. You don't have to use lard, though. Rice bread from World War One. This recipe happens to be gluten-free. As if 1918 wasn't miserable enough. We begin with a half cup of white rice. Water! The rice is resigned to be overcooked. Why you gotta say it like that? It sounds like a court order. I hereby sentence you to be overcooked. Ha! Cup and a half of cornmeal. Two tablespoons of margarine. Then one and a half cups of milk. Scolded. You useless! Do you mean scalded with an A? He's like, nah fam, that ain't no typo. I want you to yell at your milk. Hot, hot, hot. Well, the rice resigned, all right. It is no longer with us. One cup exactly. Four teaspoons of baking powder. Is this bread going to space? <laughs> Bake for a half hour in a hot oven. Yes, I know it's hot. You get it's an oven. 400 it is. Hello. Hmm. Like a really smooth, fluffy cornbread. The rice does more than you think. Thank you. A bologna cake from 1966. What's more American than bologna and cake? Eating it. Pack of cream cheese. A tablespoon of onion powder. Plus two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Boy, honey, this sure does smell like a cake, huh? Luis, I'm taking the kids. <laughs> Are you ready for bologna? Good, because there's a pound of it. She says you'll find the rest of the recipe quite intuitive. No, I don't. Certainly not. Your friends are gonna love the circles of indistinct mammal. Normally I'm quite comfortable handling meat, but this is physically disturbing me. The last one. To finish, we decorate with spray cheese. This is giving me emotions previously unknown to man. Mm. Are you supposed to eat this on crackers or on drugs? Mm. It's uncomfy and it's bad. Potato donuts from the Great Depression. Now I say that disrespecting donuts should carry a life sentence, so let's see if we're going to jail today, huh? Peel and boil two russets! You know, a lot of things start with potatoes. French fries, hash browns, famine, communism. Potatoes are finished when they're soft. Yes, I've noticed that with men, too. <laughs> Once the potatoes are cool, we add a cup of buttermilk, pack of yeast, four teaspoons of baking powder, and a half teaspoon of soda. Half cup of melted butter. Don't kill the yeasty boys. They're working very hard. Four eggs, seven them. Add enough flour to make a dough. Putting your faith in the wrong man. Sugar! Two cups! Told you not to trust me! Mm. This took about six and a half cups of flour. Now we let it rise for an hour. This is the first time we're deep frying. Mm. Nope. Cinnamon sugar. Oh! Mm. Best donut I've made. A peanut butter pie from 1953. Now this pie is described as a chiffon. Now what does that mean? It means it was written by a white person. We start by adding a pack of gelatin to water. I told you. The yolks of two eggs. Quarter cup of sugar. Ooh. And water. Cook over a double boiler. We're getting bougie today. Hi gelatin. Vigorous whisking. <laughs> Fridge. Half cup of peanut butter. Half cup of water. You're diluting peanut butter. To the gulag. Vanilla. Put this back in here. <laughs> Time to beat the egg whites. If I have to beat anything else in this recipe, I'm gonna be charged with domestic violence. Quarter cup of sugar. <laughs> egg whites. Oh, goddamn gravity. Fold. Back you go. Pastry. Nah. This better be good. Yes. Ooh. Good night. Good morning. Finish with whipped cream. <laughs> It's beautiful. Sorry about that. A polka dot prune loaf from 1951. So we're either going to be polka dotting the loaf or polka dotting the toilet. I know where I've got my money. Start by cooking 28 prunes, which is actually 28 too many. Water! Ah! Three cups of bisquick mix. Not sure if I'm curious or scared. Eggy moo juice! Now we form a dough. I wanted to make this last year, but I couldn't because there was a toilet paper shortage. Roll out and cut into 28 squares. Don't look at me. I couldn't tell you where this is going. I just know it's the wrong destination. Melted butter. Sugar. Zimmy Nim. 
Then we wrap and dip each prune before going into a loaf pan. This has to be the most complicated laxative on the planet. Dip. Spice in the pan. Keep the balls arranged closely. That is solid advice. First row done. Row two. Top the third row with nuts and bake. I don't know about this. <laughs> Between the bisquick and the prunes, it's just very odd. Plus it's liable to punish the porcelain. Frog eye salad from 1968. Start by boiling a pot of water. Fire! Cook a box of vicini de pepe to al dente. You know, the other word for al dente is correct. To a new saucepan, we have a cup of sugar. Dash of flour. Two eggies. Then the juice from all of this canned pineapple. You see this? This is concern. Cook this, drain the pasta. Time to go. Ugh. We've chilled the both of these down, and now we start combining. Pineapple. Why? The author calls this her comfort food. I call it a mistake. Pound of mandarin oranges. A tub of Cool Whip. A cup of... <laughs> marshmallows. Mm. Add salt if it needs it. It doesn't need salt, it needs help. To the fridge. <laughs> I just don't understand. Yeah, so it's not good. Survival bread from 1972. This bread is claimed to last upwards of seven years, or roughly the amount of time it's taken me to get my bachelor's degree. We start with a cup of sugar. Quarter cup of honey. The same of water. Then we bring to a boil with a pack of lemon jello. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that jello is inevitable. Oh, we love jello. Shut up. Fire! For the dry ingredients, we need two and a half cups of powdered milk. Two cups of oats. <laughs> Oh, stop, stop! How am I gonna survive the apocalypse if I can't survive oats? Once whatever this is has boiled, you add it to the dry. Oh, shoot, fit! Add a bit of water if we need to. Sweetie, this needs a lot of things, but water isn't one of them. Then we mold it into a brick. Ah, so thick! 30 minutes, 3.50. Huh. This is an enigma. It is quite dry, but not in a bad way, like a biscotti. I would take this camping. Magic ice cream from the Great Depression. Now, in my personal experience, depression and ice cream are a match made in heaven, so I have high hopes for this. We begin with one package of raspberry jello. Going to assume we have the same size package. Though the last time I made that mistake, I ended up stunned and quite self-conscious. Half cup of boiling water. Ha! Cup of sugar! By the way, this is a no-churn ice cream, hence the magic. Three cups of moon juice! Vanilla! To the fridge! Whip a cup of cream. <laughs> So this took 40 minutes to stiffen up, which means it should see a doctor, but it also means we get to fold in the whipped cream. Be very gentle. Now, if it's not folding in properly like mine, you can go ahead and cry or put it back in the fridge. It's your call. Cover and freeze until firm. Good night. Good morning. Huh. <laughs> Good heavens. It's surprisingly soft. Impressive, sir. Potato candy from the Great Depression. Just like my relationships, candy is inevitably unhealthy, so potato seems a peculiar addition. Peel and boil one russet! Ah! This recipe only has three ingredients, so I'm a bit scared. Your time has come! <laughs> Add eight to ten cups of powdered sugar. Cups? Cups! Eight is the low end. There shouldn't be eight to ten cups of anything. This is poundage of sugar. Um, the potatoes are gone. It's turned to liquid. Are you a sorcerer? So much powder! Reminds me of my summers in Colombia. We literally now have a dough which we're gonna roll out. <laughs> this is ridiculous! This potato! <laughs> Jar of peanut butter! <laughs> Every turn in this recipe has been a left. Come on! This feels familiar. To the fridge! Well... It's good. I'll be damned. A pepper cake from 1915. Instead of regular flavorings, this cake uses peppercorn and caraway, which is an interesting idea because it's awful. Half cup of butter. Sugar. Uh, Too eggy. You hate to see it. Add a cup of syrup. What do you want, Miss Butterworth? <laughs> mm. Ma'am, this is very runny, like me in an hour. To a half cup of sour cream, we add an entire tablespoon of cracked pepper, caraway, and then the floofers. Introducing the world's worst dip. Get in, flower. A cup of raisins. Love those. Mm-hmm. I just, yay. <laughs> Bacon oven. Well, at least you specified the appliance. Now, I was gonna bake this in the dishwasher. Hmm. Oh, oh, this is bizarre. It tastes like an identity crisis on a plate. A perfection salad from 1961. In typical 60s fashion, we're using gelatin. We meet again. Nothing says salad like animal collagen. <laughs> Half cup of boiling water. Fire! 
apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, bit of salt. In you go. Now we shred celery, carrots, and cabbage. Always wash these real good. Celery's just like your parents, dirtier than you think. <laughs> This was supposed to be a fun way to get kids to eat their vegetables. How'd that work out, America? Onion powder. <laughs> okay. What's the point? Go. A loaf pan? Really? I just love when my salad comes in a brick. Good night. Good morning. It's time for mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What have you perfected? Garbage. It's cold, limp, and crunchy, and bad. A coal miner cake from 1936. Starting off on the right foot here with a half cup of lard. Hm. If I cut off my feet, do we still have to do this? Ah, yeah. This stuff is great, you know. You can run your tractor on it. Brown sugar! Drizzle of molasses. Is this the coal? Four eggies! They did you dirty. We seem to have made a chamber pot. Flour. Cuckoo. Half cup of strong coffee. Fire! Now we mix baking soda into sour cream. There are too many things happening. Get in! Then we alternate flour. Coffee. Flour. Coffee. <laughs> you are banished! Has it unionized? Looks good, but looks can be deceiving. Oh, oh. You're very dense and pungent. Suppose I wouldn't mind it if I was in a coal mine, but in a coal mine, I'm not. An avocado pie from 66. Graham cracker crust. Five tablespoons of melted Paula Deen. Unsalted. She must be in a good mood today. Dash of sugar. I don't know how big your dash is. <laughs> Remember the edges, Dylan. The edges! Blind bake the shell for 15. <laughs> Avocados. Three. Ooh, it's a boy. Delicious. Howdy. Cream cheese. Sweetened condensed milk. This is from 1938. It's only electrocuted me twice. Woo! Yes, sir! You need the juice of two limes! Woo! <laughs> Smells like the war. La, la, la. Chill time! Good morning! Hmm. Hmm. You know what? This is doing something for me. It's rather eccentric, but very smooth and quite light. That right there is a summer pie. A shoe fly pie from 1900. A favorite of the Pennsylvania Dutch who apparently have this for breakfast. Now that's what you call bravery. No, 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 no. No sticking. You're gonna die here. Yes. Time for filling. An entire cup of molasses. Very cheeky. Three quarters of a cup of water. And one very lonely, very dead eggy. A teaspoon of baking powder. What exactly are we trying to raise up? Hope. Bigger with whisking. Very wet. We get to make a crumble. Sugar. Flour. Then some lard. What is it with dead people and their obsession with this? <laughs> yes, I just love baking. <laughs> oh, hello. Woo. But uh, that's molasses. Very sweet, very bitter. If you love molasses, this is the pie for you. Chocolate sauerkraut cake from 48. Thought this was a joke. Turns out I'm the joke. Sauerkraut. A whole cup. Soak in water and then drain. Better. One and a half cups of sugar. Cream time. You can use a mixer. I just do this to feel something. Eggies three. Flour. Half cup of cuckoo. Baking powder. Mmm. Water. Yummy. Fold in sauerkraut carefully. Or what? I'm gonna ruin your disaster? Can a cake be tried for treason? In she go- I know it's open! Sleep tight. Wow. Bring buttercream and chocolate to a boil. Ah! <laughs> Okay. Mm. No. Incredible. It feels like coconut. I don't taste sauerkraut. Either chocolate fixes everything or this is alchemy. A peanut pie from 1941. Courtesy of the Caro Kid, who I can only describe as an infant male escort. Ready? Work with me here. <laughs> You need a haircut. Any big plans for the weekend? Whole cup of caro. Ooh. A cup of sugar. So you want sugar with your sugar. Diabetes go boom. Eggy. Eggy shell. You didn't see anything. Margarine. Vanilla. Eight ounces of peanuts. Mm -hmm. All right. Stop looking at me. Avast. Oh, God. What have you done? Oh. Demon baby. What did I do? It tastes like crunchy diesel. A carrot pie from 1919. Before pumpkin pie became king, people ate this. Now they're dead. Pound of carrots. <laughs> Reloading. I just love this. Water. Fire. Time for pastry. Welcome to the world. It's awful. Get in, please. Get in the pan. Get in. Moo juice. Only a half cup of sugar. It's time for some eggy ginger. Simmon Time's up. Uh.
combine all ingredients except for pie shell. Were you really worried that I was gonna mix in a fully constructed pie shell into this? I'm a fool, not an idiot. This is frighteningly liquid. Who are you? Hmm. Fascinating. Hold on. It's a pumpkin pie and pasta. Bit chewier, but elsewise lovely. A 7-Up Jello salad from 63. Let me tell you, this recipe... <laughs> Cream cheese. Gotta get you fluffy. Half a cup of mayo. This went downhill pretty quick. Water. Fire. Lime jello. More like crime jello. It's like reading directions to purgatory. Whoop. Star of the show. Now we have carbonated mayonnaise lime water. Don't ask me how it smells. Gotta chill. Pineapple and maraschinos. Everything's so sticky. Okay. Cool whip. One, two. Marshmallows. With the mayo. Walnuts. Unholy. See you later. Good morning. Woo. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say it's bad. It tastes like aggressively sweet fruit salad put into lime gelato. That doesn't make any of this okay. Pipped beef from World War II. Also known as shit on a shingle. Butter. Milk. Fire. Now we have dried beef. I didn't know beef came in a jar. Chop up your dehydrated cow. Pamper bath. Flour. Pepper. Boys, it's time to toast. I can see where the name comes from. <laughs> Mm, no, no. Mm, yeah, it's not good. It tastes like it's insulting me. Chocolate mayonnaise cake from 56. This has been my most requested cake. Of course it's the mayonnaise. Flour! Sugar! Floofers! Today you will rise! Potted cuckoo! Why she smells like chocolate? Mayonnaise! And it's not just a little bit. No, no, it's a severe, unauthorized cup of mayonnaise. Cup of water. Honey, you can't dilute a war crime. You know, it's horrible now, but I hope it turns out okay. Like children. I'm sending you to summer camp. <laughs> For the frosting, we boil milk, sugar, cocoa, and margarine. Fire! Beat in mayonnaise to the chocolate. Do you keep it in your purse? Hello. Maybe if I just don't think about it. Good heavens. Holy fuck. Fantastically moist. The chocolate is tangy. I'll concede you were right. A bean pie from the 1920s. Beans, you heard me. Now these took a long bath last night. Good night. Good morning. Time to cook them. Fire! Pastry! Gotta use your fingies. Mm. Thank you for cooperating today. Ah. Bean rebellion! Two cups of flour. Yummy, yummy. Simon yam, mo juice, eggy. How many? I don't know. It just says eggs. Sugar. Oh dear. Uh. Four. <laughs> Did you just kill my blender? Hello? <laughs> This is personal now. You swung first. <laughs> Checkmate. Looks horrifying. Let's slow down for a bit. Nothing makes sense anymore. Why are you good? You have a bag of beans in you. A Watergate salad from 1976. One of the many questionable substances people experimented with in the 70s. Pistachio pudding. In you go. <laughs> Crushed pineapple. Hello, you have any green set. Cup of fluffy boys. Smells like a Palm Springs retirement home. Time to beat it. Cooperate. <laughs> Perfect. Good night. Optional walnuts. Walnuts are never optional. Oh my. Nixon wished it was this easy. Cheers. Ooh. Yep. Nixon would have loved this. It's not bad. It's just a cup of diabetes. I can feel my teeth rotting. Ham and bananas hollandaise. Welcome to the 70s. Four bananas. Peeled. Whoopsie. Boiled ham. Now we need to individually wrap the bananas. This was still the Cold War after all. Fear of communist bananas was at an all-time high. Bake it. Seems logical. Ten minutes. Hollandaise. Oh boy. Eggy. Just the yolk. Water and lemon juice. <laughs> Very hot butter. Careful. Very slowly. Cayenne. My bananas are baked. The 70s. Sponsored by the color beige. Oh boy. Huh? Mm hmm? Sweet, it's meaty, it's salty. It's uncomfortably appetizing. A pork belly fruit cake from 1915. Meat and desserts was quite common back then. So was botulism. Steep a pound of pork in a cup of water. Fire! Yeah. Honey, would you like Earl Grey or pork? I'll take a divorce. Sugar! Bloop. Cup of molasses. Sweet, bitter, and meaty. Like my ex. Yeah, why is it foaming? Do you think you could hear me? Currants. Peel. Apple juice. What? Ginger. Don't say it, Dylan. Simon yam. Needs flour. One, two, three. How big is this cake? Ah. 350 for two and a half hours. Suppose any less and it might gain consciousness. Chungus. She's looking like a house foundation. All right, we got two fruitcakes here. Ah. 
Mm -mm. What's scary is that it's not terrible. It's got this oily richness to it, but something just ain't right. I think it's the pound of pork. A spam pie from the 1960s. A little late in the century for war crimes. Crust is saltines. Downshift. <laughs> Boda. Eggy. Marjoram. Are you just making things up? Who are you? You know, I've never been particularly religious, but today might be the day. A cup of evaporated milk. Have you lost the plot? I feel like if I do this correctly, I'm gonna invoke the spirit of Richard Nixon. This ain't food, honey. This is a bioweapon. <laughs> Cheddar. You're a monster. Liposuction looking. Decorate with almonds. D decorate? How do you decorate a tumor? He says, don't worry. They'll toast in the oven. We're not concerned about the almonds. I am in utter fear. Oh, God damn. Yeah, this is severe. It tastes like an IHOP kitchen floor. A vinegar pie from the Great Depression. A modern take on home baking. Sir, your phone number is four digits. Pastry. This is my son. Get a little bit dusty. Meow. You're gonna want a deep nine inch. Don't we all? Blind bake at 350. <laughs> Eggy. No, officer, there's no shell in here. Sugar! Add your Paula Deen extract. So far, so good. Vinegar. I take it back. Leaky wakey, time for school. A dash of sorghum. Well, I don't have sorghum, because I don't have a life expectancy of 12. Woo. That's the power of pine salt, baby. For thine is the kingdom. <laughs> Bake to your liking. Sweetie, none of this is my liking. Don't come back. It came back. Nah. Uh, heaven. This is what I'd imagine a toilet brush to taste like. A chocolate potato cake from 1912. This is why we don't perform lobotomies anymore. Boil a potato. Did I mention this was a cake? Skins stay on, unlike Americans. Fire! Cream the butter. Can we at least have coffee first? Butter go boom. Should be a pale white. Eggy. Wakey, wakey. Who's tough now? Moo juice. Bloop. Simonim! Chocolate. I bet this recipe is just all the wrong answers on a baking test. Mm -hmm. Smells like dentures. Go away. Goodbye. For the icing, we boil butter, sugar, milk, and chocolate. My time has come. Not bad, dead people. All right. <laughs> You're not supposed to work. It's incredible, and I'm mad about it. A tomato soup cake from 1950. Ah! What's the difference between margarine and shortening? The amount of time spent on the toilet. Need reinforcements. Sugar in a carton. <laughs> Creamy. Sift your flour three times. Lady, your cake has tomato soup in it. This is the least of your worries. Clove, cinnamon, and nutmeg. With the soup. Can't hide from me. I wish you could. Bloop. Simmy No, no, no. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, that lady Carol is at the barbecue again. Careful not to overmix. Sorry, I'm just trying to kill it. it. Smells like a hospital. Tomato spice. If pumpkin spice got hit by a bus. At least it's not moving. Icing. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Doesn't taste like tomato. Tastes like chocolate. A soured raisin pie from the Second World War. Now I know this is gonna be awful because it calls for soured milk, not buttermilk, not milk and vinegar, no honey. Soured bad milk! Oh, she thick! The raisins! Ooh, ooh. Use butter pastry for flavor. Flavor! Three, two, one! Blast off! To the toilet, a cup of sour cream. Disgusting wasn't enough for you. Call the UN. Add spices. Thanks for that. What goes well with IBS? Brown sugar. Smells like Normandy. Charming. Bake until done. You're a piece of work. Goodbye. <laughs> the pothole. I should have gone to church. Yeah. Oh, oh. No, no, no. <laughs> Tastes like a shower drain or a bunion. A fake apple pie from the Great Depression. This recipe was sent to me by Herbert Hoover Feet Picks. There's something for everybody. Instead of apples, this recipe uses Ritz crackers. Sugar! Water! Fire! Stir until disgusting. Crap time! Oh, you crafty. <laughs> Are you nine inches yet? Said 15 year old me. Lemon juice. I wish. 40 Ritz crackers. <laughs> What am I supposed to expect? Ugh, him and him. Suppose it's better than eating your offspring. Do I call the police or a priest? A priest. Honey, there's been an accident. Bake it 4.30. I'm bleeding. Oh boy. Whoa. <laughs> it tastes like apples. We found the first good one. No man this Valentine's Day? No problem! Let's make a 1950s candle salad. Start with one piece of lettuce. Oh, Betty Crocker, what are you up to? French Revolution, your pineapple. You could just use canned pineapple. 
if you're a communist. Peel a banana. Betty, darling, put the banana in. <laughs> you're out of pocket. <laughs> This one's European. Insert. Insert what? One toothpick in the top. Add one maraschino cherry for the flame. Oh god, it's bleeding. For the candle wax. The what? And with that, your candle salad is finished. No shit. Doesn't tell you how to eat it. So I don't know if I need a knife and fork or I need to tie my hair back. Good morning. I mean, it tastes like a banana. Have a good Valentine's. Stay safe. A water pie from the Great Depression. Can you bake a pie with four ingredients? Yes! I could also eat my mattress. Fire your oven. I'm sorry, but we have to let you go. Pastry! It's been 13 months. What if I told you I hate pie? Oh boy, it fits! Fork it! I'm not that desperate. Blind bake the pastry. That's rude. Are you still here? Damn it. Add three gills of water. Is this written for a fish? Is this a joke? Sugar! Flour. I think this qualifies as a pre-existing condition. Unconstitutional! Top with butter. We're not even at a red light. This is not legal! <laughs> Alright, it finished a bit early. Like my ex. Uh, it's a breast implant. No, ma'am! Very bad! Tastes like lint. Soggy lint. <laughs> A civil war cake. Of course it uses lard. Why not? <laughs> Honey, call the police. Two cups of raisins. It's always the raisins. Add one egg of lard. What are you feeding your chickens? You happy? Sister. Ah, fire! A cup of coffee. No. One cup of coffee. This is a misdemeanor. I think I've summoned something. Brown sugar! Eggy! Lard! What do you want me to do with this? They call the CDC. This is the South's revenge. Ah! Flour. Apple. Add nuts. I, how much? I need nut instructions. Cinnamon! Woo! Smells deceased. Uh. Seems to have collapsed. Like the South. Mm. Tastes damp. Wet. A cake with meat in the middle? You bet. Out in the Atlantic is the island of Bermuda, and every Christmas here we make something called cassava pie, starting with the root of the cassava plant. Same thing you make tapioca out of. We put it in a tea towel and squeeze the ever-living daylights out of it. <laughs> the unprocessed root contains cyanide, so we squeeze it to get rid of anything bitter before adding a pound and a half of butter, that's five sticks, and then a dozen eggs, <laughs> plus a casual two pounds of sugar. <laughs> As you can see... We have plenty of it. <laughs> Add some fresh nutmeg and you can start building your pie. Most Bermudians just use chicken, but this year we use chicken and beef. Top it off, fork it over, and bake it for three whole hours. But by the end of it, that is the smell of Christmas. A Swedish meat ring. The slogan for this cookbook is, it's digestible. Crisco. We don't know what it is either. Make a pie pastry with Crisco, all caps. Remember kids, the main ingredient in pie pastry is self-doubt. Oh, a Christmas miracle! Onion! Here come the tears. Like my mom after a glass of wine. Fire! Fry in two tablespoons of Crisco. On this episode of Dead White People. Ground beef. Who's mooing now? The tomato and the beef. Lighting very good. I stay right together with you. It's like if a beef wellington got sad. This feels familiar. Brush with egg to make presentable. Honey, that ship has sailed. Cream peas. I didn't know tuberculosis had a color scheme. <laughs> I've baked a toilet. I won't lie, it smells good. Hmm. Tastes good, but it feels like a pre-existing condition. An emergency war cake. No eggs, no milk, no butter, no joy. There's no sugar either. Is this the cake? Two teacups of raisins. How am I supposed to know how big your teacups are, Ira? One teacup of dates. Why do dead people like dates so much? Bam! Fire! Cup and a half of molasses. Pretty sure this is how diesel is made. Cinnamon! Ira needs cloves! Easy does it. Wouldn't want to ruin a disaster. <laughs> Here goes nothing. What in good God is this? <laughs> Ira, honey, I'm going to war. Over what? You're cooking. Come on! This is the only cake that looks burnt before you bake it. Uh... Oh dear. <laughs> Mm. Tastes like a boot. It's like a size 10 boot. A prune pie from the Great Depression. Why just live in the Great Depression when you could also have chronic diarrhea? Wants me to plump in my prunes in water. I ain't plumping my prunes in nothing. Buy me dinner first. Pastry! Are you getting plump? Is plumping even a verb? I have birthed you. Easy does it. Blind bake the pie shell. That was distasteful. It looks like a failed grave robbery. Crust complete. Fire! Sugar. 
prunes. Smells like botulism. It's 10 p.m. and I'm boiling prunes in my kitchen. Walnuts ain't gonna save this recipe, sweetie. Beat egg whites. How many? <laughs> Stiff. Fold together. How does one know when a laxative is done cooking? Alrighty. Huh. You know, it's not bad. It just vaguely tastes like a felony. Tuna salad jello. You bet. What are you doing with that tuna, Dylan? Oh, you know, making jello. 1969 Lubbock, Texas community cookbook. Cup of water. Salt. Fire. Half a red onion. This was written by Mitchell White. Of course that's his name. This recipe is making me cry, not the onions. Gelatin vinegar. Already smells like death. In you go. Really, Mitchell? I want to know who hurt this man. Celery. Make sure to chop it up all fine and disgusting. Five ounces of albacore tuna. Are we sure this recipe wasn't written by a cat? Was Mitchell a cat? Now we wait. Oh boy. Oh. How did we get to this? I do this for you. Oh, oh. Mitchell! That's not food. This is a war crime.